Okay, this is a short video just showing how to make nice looking text boxes in Google Docs. Uh, so Google Docs doesn't actually have the concept of a text box. You won't find anything in the menus about inserting a text box. I have seen people insert a drawing with a text box in it, um, but the way I'm going to show you works much better with the flow of the document and it's easier to um, edit the text in them and they expand nicely as you type. So first of all, how to create a text box. So the way that I'm doing it is basically creating a table with a single cell. So there are a few different ways to create that. Um, the first way is in the table menu. I can go insert table and then you select the size. In this case, we just want one by one since we're simulating a text box. Uh, another way is through the insert menu. So you can insert a table, and that's just the same as the other way of creating it. Um, and then there are a few shortcuts to those menu items. So in, if you're using Google Chrome, you can press Alt-B to open the table menu. And that's opened there. Um, and then you press I to choose insert, and then you can press Enter to insert the table. If you're using a browser other than Google Chrome, you may also have to press Shift with Alt and B to open that menu. So I'll just put this text in there. So you can see that I've just pasted some text in that in that single cell table, and it's expanded to suit the size of the text that I put in there. Um, so that's a useful property of these. And that might be all you want. If you just want to have something in a with a black outline, then that could be sufficient. But there's a lot you can do to style them and make them look better. So um, a lot of the things that you change are done through table properties. So the way you open those is first make sure you've got the cursor positioned inside a table. And then in the table menu, you can open table properties. And that will show you a number of things that you can change about the style of that table. You can also do the same thing using key shortcuts, using again Alt B or Shift Alt B to open the table menu and then press T to open the table properties. So now I'll go through and show how to edit a few of those table properties to get different effects. The first one is background color. So in this case, I'm going to open the table properties. I'll use the menu this time and look for cell background color. And I'll just set that to a distinctive color. Usually the lighter colors along here or the lighter grays are good choices because text is still readable on those colors. If you make it too dark, you may have to change the color of the text to white for it to be readable. This is superior to if I were to select the text and change the background uh, highlight color of the text to the same color. You'll notice that it doesn't fill up the whole box and you can see a little bit of a divide between lines and it doesn't give you a nice square. So setting the background color there is a, a much better way to do it. You can also change the border. So on this one I'll make I'll just use the key shortcut, so I'll press Alt-B and then T to open table properties. Now this time I'm going to make the border a bit thicker, let's say three point, and I'll make it a uh, light grey colour. And that helps to distinguish it from the text. It's still dividing the text from, um, from like within the box from the text around it, um, but this time without that thin um, that thin line, it's less distracting from the text because it's a, uh, a different color and thickness, so it's easier to distinguish it with the eye. Uh, another thing you can do is if you have a background color, is open the table properties with Alt T and then B, and just set the table border to zero point, and that removes the border completely. And without the border, then that's just less going on with. Um, black 
around there so it becomes easier to read the text because um, there's less distraction. Um, now, that looks a little crowded like, there, like that. The text is quite close to the edge of the box and that can make it a bit um, hard to harder to read. So I'm going to change the padding around this. So again, Alt B and T to open the table properties. And this time you're looking for the cell padding setting. And I'm going to change it from the default and make it 0.8 centimeters. And you can see there that's got a lot more area around the text. 0.8 is probably a bit more than I would normally go, um, but that shows the um, kind of effect you get. And that's much easier to focus on the text in that text box because the uh, other text around is not crowded in so much and it's not so close to the edge of the box, which can distract the eye from the text. Uh, you can also play around with width and height settings. So here's a text box. The, the simple way is to just drag the edges of the text box in. And then there's a um, another way that gives you more control uh, that I'll show in a moment. So in this case, I'm going to drag the right-hand side of this text box in to make it narrower. So you can see I positioned the cursor over the right-hand side of the box, and it'll change to this resizing cursor. Um, and then I click, hold down the mouse, and move it to where I want, and then release. In this case, I'll delete that so I get two nice rows. Um, now, with this one, I'll just drag the left side of the box across. And that gives me a box that's aligned on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and then another thing I can do is just drag both sides in and make a text box that's positioned in the center. Um, but it can be difficult. I can use the rulers at the top of the page to try and um, try and get this text box aligned exactly where I want it. Um, but it can be very fiddly to make something that's properly centered just by dragging the sides. So the other way to do it is to open the table properties and change these settings manually because as you drag those, it'll automatically set some of the properties for you. So here I'm opening the table properties. You can drag the table properties box around, by the way. Um, so I can see here that I've said that I'm setting it to 10 centimeters. So I'm going to change the column width here to 10 centimeters. And you can see that that gives me the same effect as if I dragged it in from the side. And yeah, one note there is that you can't actually see what width you've changed it to. So if I were to change this to 12, even if I have a look behind there, I, it doesn't actually change size until you press OK. And so you might have to play around for a while to get the right size if you do it this way. So dragging from the side to get the, the size exactly right um, can be more convenient. Um, so the other important setting is alignment. So up here, I just drag the sides to get something aligned to the left, to the right, or in the center. Uh, but you can also set the table properties. So in this case, opening table properties, I'm going to set the column width to 10 centimeters so that we can see the change. And I'm setting the alignment to the right. So now you can see that's given me something on the right, and it's 10 centimeters across. And if I were to drag that, it would stay aligned to the right. And I'll align this one to the center. So I'll give that some width so that it has somewhere to, to move into the center. And then I'll set the table alignment to the center here. And then that gives me something that's aligned in the center, and I know that that's got the same amount of distance either side because I use that center property, whereas this one up here, it might not be quite even on either side. And also, if I were to resize it, it 
it doesn't stay in the center. Whereas if I resize this centered one, both sides will move in, and so I can adjust the size without having to worry about getting both sides into the center. Just set that back to 12 so that the text is accurate. Um, and finally, with left alignment, you can add a left indent. So this is only available when the alignment is set to left. If you set it to center or right, it gets grayed out and you can't change it. Um, but left aligned, you can add, I'll do two centimeters there, and that moves it in from the left side, um, which may be useful. So it's similar to if you were to align it over to the right and set the column width to whatever this distance is here. Um, but if you just want to move it a particular distance from the left, um, then this is an easier way to do that rather than calculating what, what width you need. So that's everything I wanted to cover. I hope this is helpful. And I'll put a link to this document in the notes for the video so you can have a look at the end result and make a copy of the document to play with yourself. The way you make a copy of a document is you can go File, Make a Copy, and that will make a, your own copy of this document in your Google Drive for you to play with. Thanks for watching.